Kyle Bass as well, both well known to the CNBC audience. And the Committee on Present Danger is the fourth iteration of really an organization that was built in the 1950s to counter Russian influence as well. It's gone through a number of cycles. This fourth cycle really is based on the China threat. These two gentlemen are members of that organization. Uh, Steve, to start with you, listen, okay, I heard your talk, and there's a lot of talk about the China threat. Per capita income of $9,000. Right, agrarian pre-industrial economy still, demographic cliff. Why do you believe China really is such a threat to the United States and the global economy? Well, look at what they're doing. Look at look at One Belt, One Road, made in China 2025 in the, in the 5G rollout of Huawei. They have a converging geopolitical strategy to combine, to, to basically unite the Eurasian landmass into one single market and to force the United States first out of the Western Pacific, then out of the Pacific overall, and off the Eurasian landmass. I mean, they are the most significant existential threat that we've ever faced. And, and, and on a per capita basis, it may be correct, but they're a major financial power, a major industrial power, and the, the radical cadre, this is not the Chinese people. The Chinese people are among the most hardworking and decent people in the world. This is about a radical cadre that is taking charge of the Chinese Communist Party, led by President Xi and Wan Shishan and other of his henchmen that are driving us to really, they've been running economic war against the industrial democracies, Japan, South Korea, North America, and Western Europe for 20 years. Is it, Steve, is it industrial war or is it just exactly what the United States did 100 years ago? Right, we were the low cost labor producer to England. We had child labor, we had all these labor law violations seven days a week, the Triangle Shirtwaist we never Factory. Did, hang on, hang on, hang on. We how never, are we, we, how are they, they're just trying to build their economy the same way we built ours. 100% different, we still had the rule of law. Right? We had the Constitution, we had free speech, we had freedom of religion, we had freedom of expression, we had free market capitalism. Okay, what they have is exactly opposite, right? They, they are basically, and this is what you see with both the Uyghurs and what their technology and their, and their facial recognition, they essentially run an, a, you know, almost a slave camp, right? They are a suppressive, a totalitarian dictatorship that the Western, the, the West has financed. It's totally different than the rise of the United States, which just was a rise of another developing country like India and others. You don't see what China is, is foisting on the world. And right now, yeah. they've got this predatory capitalism like the British East India Company that is this one belt, one road that they get these countries in debt traps, foreclose on the assets, and then take total control. So it's a, this is a radically different okay, thing Kyle, than the rise of America. I've got to follow up one on that because you had a line in there which I think opened a lot of eyeballs because there's a lot of Wall Street people that were listening to you. And you said corporate America is the lobbying firm for the Chinese Communist Party, and Wall Street is the investor relations firm for it. Really? Uh, yeah, corporate uh, uh, America is uh, funding uh, the Chinese uh, Communist Party? Uh, 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 by, by the way, the funding, the entire, the entire operation of the Chinese Communist Party and what they're running in China is being funded by Wall Street, which Kyle can walk through, being funded by Wall Street, and corporate America. Remember, PBS or NPR had this thing the other day about, about uh, intrusions into stealing intellectual property in American companies. They talked to a, a Treasury official that went around to like 200 companies, not one company would had been stolen from would press charges because they didn't want to be blocked out of China. Corporate America today is the lobbying arm of the Chinese Communist Party, and Wall Street is the investor relations department. You can see this on President Trump's on President Trump's trade negotiation, which I say is basically an armistice on the economic war. When Li He comes to the United States, where does he go first? He goes to meet. He had a lunch. This is about two months this ago. The Chinese but trade representative the reports Ch the president Xi. Xi. He comes the first day. He has a lunch with representatives, the government affairs guys, and the COOs and the presidents of the big biggest companies in China to put pressure on President Trump. All the pressure coming from President Trump to get a deal mm -hmm. is not from the Chinese. It's from Wall Street. It's from industrial America.